in this class we are going to create a http trigger function in order to invoke a function we need to have a trigger in this case we are making use of the http trigger so that the function will be triggered for any request what we make over http protocol you can have a look on this documentation if you are stuck anywhere while practicing this class now without wasting much time let's begin with our hands on so in our previous class we had created this function set and we had got into this functions app we had the basic overview on what is this overview option available for the functions app so if you don't know how to navigate through this or you have missed the navigation or you are continuing this class after some time then what you can do is you can just click on this search bar over here and select the functions app or else you can just type here the function it will list the function app under the services click on this once you click on the functions app it will list all the functions app which have been created under the particular subscription and the resource group I am having only one function app created that is this one BL testing 102 I will click on this just minimize this bar over here it will take me to the overview section of the functions app in this class as we are creating our very first function within this application we need to select the functions option which is under the functions over here so click on this functions as of now we don't have any function created within this function app in order to create the first function click on this create button First, it will ask the development environment. I'm having this developing pattern option. Suppose if you are developing this function with the help of the VS Code or any other editor, you can select this option. So this we will look in our classes going ahead. Currently, I'm developing with the help of Portal. Next, Azure is having few of the templates, so we can click on this and it will generate the boilerplate code for us. So we don't have to sit and write the code from scratch. So if we select any of the options, it will create the boilerplate code. So our responsibility is just to focus on the business requirement rather than focusing on writing or generating the code for function from scratch, which will be initiated with the help of this Q trigger, topic trigger, storage trigger. I will select this HTTP trigger as I want our function to be triggered with the help of the HTTP request. Now if you scroll down, it will ask for the new function. So this function name should be unique within our functions app that is this VL testing 102. So if you remember this VL testing 102 which is the functions app name it should be unique globally within the Azure. But this functions name it should be unique only within our function app. I am keeping this default if you want you can just change this. Coming to the authorization level there are three kind of authorizations available. So function if you select it will be needing the function key in order to access this function. If you select this anonymous option over here under the authorization level, then this function could be invoked by anyone without any security. Coming to the admin, so there is a master key concept. We will have a look on this in detail in our coming classes, like what this admin master key stands for, what is the anonymous or the function key in detail. So as of now, I am selecting this function key over here. With the help of the function key, we will be authenticating our request or authorizing our request calls, which are being made over the HTTP protocol. So once you select all the details, click on the create button. So it will take couple of seconds in order to create. So once created, it will straight away take you to the new function which you have created. Suppose if it doesn't take you to the function which you have created, then what you can do is within the functions app, click on this functions. It will list all the functions which are part of this functions app. So as we have created HTTP trigger one, select this. So when we create any function in the Azure, it will create a boilerplate code for us so which can initiate or get the request from the http triggers now as we are making use of the azure portal in order to create our functions app we are not using any editor like the vs code or any other editors so we can select this code plus test option over here now this is creating a function which will receive the request over http protocol context is the first parameter which will hold the metadata of the function like what was the http method used in order to trigger this function so what are the HTTP methods available like the gate, post, so and so forth things and the request. This is the request input bindings for us with the help of which we can extract the body as well as the query parameters, path parameters, so and so forth things. As well as there is the response parameter as well which is used to bind the response bindings over here or the output bindings. So in detail in our next class we will learn what are the bindings and the trigger configurations used in this function. So overall this function is just checking for the name. This function is like a hello world program wherein it is checking whether name has been sent as a query parameter in the request or the name has been sent in a body so it is extracting request.body or request.body.name it is extracting so if it is s then it is typing hello and the name so this http trigger function executed successfully if the name has not been sent neither in the query parameter nor in the body 
then we are sending one message like this http trigger function executed successfully but the name has not been passed so once we generate this message then we will create a body over here with the help of context.rest we are passing this message back so this is the boilerplate code which azure has created whenever we create any function